From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, welcome to Ropecast. And hi, Roger. Hello, Peter. Have you seen Skyfall? I mean, the new James Bond movie? No, I haven't. No. If you like that kind of movie at all, go see it. It's great. Uh-huh. Wonderful. Great acting, too. Yeah. I mean, Daniel Craig, I think, great choice. One thing, though, you know how the other day we were talking about British and American English? Yeah. And it occurred to me when I saw him, and I was thinking back because of the 50th anniversary of James Bond, an American never gets a shot at becoming James Bond. And, you know, that's I think that's one way of sort of snobbing <laughs> The American actors, they could do that. But Britain has such talent in acting. Yes, I know. Britain's got talent. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of House. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Uh, I admit that. But see, the Americans give them a chance. I, I didn't even know that Hugh Laurie was a British actor before I watched the extras, the, the you know, the, yes. these features on, on one of my DVDs. Uh -huh. Where he started speaking uh, British and said he'd learned the accent. He, to me, I, I would have taken him for an American any day. Yeah, I think the British are very skeptical as to whether an American is capable of sounding British, and above uh -huh. all, sounding English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but isn't James Bond supposed to be a Scotsman? Oh, you're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, that's you there. <laughs> that, that would be slightly easier for an American, I think, because of the, the R pronunciations. Mm -hmm. But only slightly. Slightly. Uh -huh. On the subject of James Bond, I uh -huh. saw a reference to... No, this is not a James Bond novel. That is not a an Ian Fleming novel about James Bond, but a short story by Ian Fleming. Yeah. Uh, who And a character in there, who is supposed to be British, uses the expression F.O. Pouch. And that was taken up in an article at the time in a British magazine uh -huh. um, by, well, the, the person objected to this use of pouch and said that's pure American. If you're talking about the kind of things that diplomats carry around with them around the world or carried for them, mm -hmm. it would have to be a bag. It's a diplomatic bag. It can't be a pouch. Uh -huh. So that right back then, this was in the 1950s, people were complaining about an un-English word being used in what should be a British novel or short story. Mm -hmm. You see this continuing prejudice, sensitivity. And quite often, if you look at quotes where people objected to Americanisms, yes. what they were objecting to were not really Americanisms at all. They were just new things in the English language. So the Americans True. always get the blame. And I think it would be very hard then for a major movie to say, okay, let's, let's use an, an American actor to play James Bond. Uh huh. Okay, I see. Well, as for the expressions, you know, the, the British will have a very hard time uh, in the future to reject any American expressions due to the technological development. Oh yes. Because those yeah. who invent get to name it. Yeah, like the World Wide Web. You mean? Yes, for example. Which is a British invention. Uh, of sorts. It was invented <laughs> in Switzerland, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you're trying to get back at the <laughs> uh, at the Americans. You, I, I know that Americans have recently imported the term ginger to describe hair color. That's right. And um, that, for me, actually, that's a no-no. That's red-haired. Yeah. Well, and actually... Um, just think of Charlie Brown, you know, being <laughs> in love with a ginger-haired girl. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Actually, I think... There are so many of um, these words which seem to be gradually infiltrating American English. Uh -huh. I think that would make a whole other episode of podcasts. Uh huh. Okay, you go and look a few up, and we'll talk in two weeks. Okay. Okay. See ya. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.